No, I don't think so. Um, okay. In it, yep. it's not like something that, it's the internet though, isn't it, I think. Is well, it? what I'm thinking is that I can, uh, do you have it with you, Neil? What's that, sorry? Do you have the drawing of the snail? No, no. You guys received, uh, did you receive it? Was it in your, the booklet? No. You know, the... I don't think so. I no. Think, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll have to find, well, I'm going to um, share it on the screen with you. And Paul said he had sent it, if I recall, but I can send it to Paul again. Paul has a copy of it. So you can Fine. have a copy. I think it's nice to have this drawing because I'm going to be using the snail to explain yam. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to, the only thing is that Bartej, I'm going to see if I can share something. Okay. I'm going to try to see if I can do it. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, we can see Ooh. it. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. So I just, I'll just show this is, um, this is caracol. So that's why it has these, uh, this, is the, this is the caracol teddy bear. Uh, it was given to me after I explained uh, GAM in Brazil. And this is why it has those colors. And now when I travel and I bring GAM to different places, my suitcase, half of it is full. It's full of snails like this. And uh, I was arrested once at an airport because they thought I was smuggling teddy bears or something. So <laughs> anyway, so that's the, okay. So I, I, I call it the gam caracol because um, caracol means snail in Spanish and in Portuguese. And it's also to, as a, to, to honor all the efforts that our Brazilians are, are making. They're working very hard. As we're talking right now, the place where there are the greatest number of GAM practices are in Brazil. So, and so just as, a, as to honor their work and also the, it was for them that I came up with this name. So we'll start with the word GAM. GAM, GAM it's a translation from, from the French. Um, in English, it's gain the autonomy and medication. In French, the words we wanted to keep GAM the acronym the same. So whether we're in Spain, we're in Japan, we're in Brazil, we want to keep at least keep this so that we all know we're talking about GAM. Uh, what's important to know in English, the gaining autonomy, when we refer to autonomy, what we refer to is that it's to promote the autonomy of the person so that he or she has choices has a voice and often doctors are people that are afraid when users, medication takers talk, talk about medication. They think it's to be, it's to, the autonomy means having, um, not having the support of a doctor and it's not the case. Um, you know, medication takers have the choice, but our experience has been that they prefer having the support or their doctor or the psychiatrist. So it's, it's a, something you'll see in the steps. It's something that we do with a network of support. Um, unless the person doesn't want to, but usually the people want to. So when, we, when you hear or you see a snail, can you say a few of the words that come to mind? What does it, how does it speak to you, a snail? What does it mean to you? Do you wanna say a few of the words? Slow and steady. Slow and steady? So is that Neil who said that? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Right on, right on. You got it. Bang on. Uh, slow and steady. If you, I don't know if you like snails, but I love snails. <laughs> and once some, I love the movement of their antennas. I, I say it's the, one of the gentlest movements I know in this universe. It's very beautiful. I think you will not see snails the same way after this talk. And I think you may not want to eat them anymore if you eat some, <laughs> okay? So, um, so, uh, so the snails slow and steady. You look at them and they look slow, but you turn your back and you turn around and you can't find the snail anymore. <laughs> slow and steady is the word for gam. Um, we'll talk a little bit more a lot, uh, later about the shell. The shell is a spiral. 
also the spiral of the shell is a reminder of the path of healing and the path of a GAM process. So it's, it's, it's not a linear process. It's a process of going back and forth. A failure does not exist in a GAM, in a GAM perspective. Okay. So whether we, we go back and take more medication than we did, than we started reducing, we get hospitalized. Failure does not exist. These are all parts of the learning process. I um, I'm yeah. just going to say, I was just thinking of this, you know, this the symbol of the snail and what else it sort of means. Um, it's also because the snail carries its shell on its back. Yes. It can hide at times. And then when it feels safe, it can come back out again and keep moving forward. So I guess yes. that sort of feeling of something that you've got your little safe haven all the time. Yes, I love it. Love it. Yeah, and you'll see, I'm teaching you GAM the way I teach it often, the first time. Uh, so, so right away, I can see you're getting into it. And you'll see that when you explain it, people will come up with other associations. You'll see it's a very powerful. It's also, I believe, in the unconscious. And uh, the snail is an ancient symbol that we find uh, in many different cultures. So I think unconsciously, um, it speaks to us. And, and most of all, the snail also is, is it's a way of, put, of gathering together the different principles. Because before I found there are many things to gamble. How can we find one thing to wrap it all up so that it's easy to remember? So I think you may have forgotten a lot of things I've said today, but you won't, will not have forgotten the snail or the caracol. So if we look at the top, we see co-construction. I'm not sure if this is a word that you use in English. Uh, so we use that word a lot. Uh, is the GAM is, was invented with medication users and workers. Later on, the researchers came on board. It's still, and it's, I've mentioned it a couple of weeks ago, and it's an organic process. Each time we have a safe space of open dialogue about medication, we are building GAM like we are today. Just like right now, and Andy, you said that uh, the snail carries its house on its back and it can retract and go in it whenever it wants. I could say that if I relate it to GAM is that if you want to take a break from asking yourself questions about medication, you can go back into your shell whenever you want. As a matter of fact, in life, you can go back into your shell whenever you want to. Don't. We all need a safe space. And as, as much as possible, as closely as accessible, as, as, closely, as close as possible. But I know during COVID, it's, everything is trickier. So um, GAM started because a per, because uh, I was part of medication users. I'm, I'm a, I forgot to introduce myself. I get confused in my identities. I'm a social worker. I took medication. I also see myself as a lived experience. So you'll see me talking as a social worker, <laughs> as a person who took medication. So um, it came from people wanted to taking medication. We wanted to be empowered. We wanted to know what we were taking. We wanted to have choices. We wanted to have power. We wanted to be listened to. And it was very difficult to get these things. It's still a challenge nowadays. So the original impetus to get GAM is still there. The next thing that I like to talk about when I explain GAM is the foot. The foot of the snail of the caracol represents the rights. If you, if the, if the snail doesn't have its foot, it will not be able to move forward. It's the same thing with GAM. At the core of GAM are the rights. Without rights, we're not going anywhere. So rights should be respected in relation to medication. So this can be about informed consent. It could be about the right. Um, I think the rights are similar in different countries. We have the right to participate in our treatment, et cetera, et cetera. So rights, the rights is really 
um, it's really the basic principle and the other ones, the other principles follow. Uh, something very important. If you look at the top, I am a person, not an illness. Uh, this has been translated into several languages. Uh, it was a cry from the heart from a service user. It happened in Quebec in 1987. And it was during a, com a parliamentary committee, during a commission in Quebec. There were all these professionals, workers, doctors talking about illness, illness, blah, 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 blah. And then this person came up and said in French, je suis une personne, pas une maladie. I am a person, not an illness. So the first step, you'll see the first GAN step is that. I am a person, I am a citizen, I am not an illness. Celine, on yes? the screen, we've got a gray block on the, I don't know what that is. Okay, this is, you know, it's the stupid ads. Hold on a second. Thank you for telling me. That's okay. The ads, they pop, eh? Uh, I just have to find a way. Is it okay now? Yeah. There's, there's a little block at the bottom, but we can read everything. All right. Well, we can put up with this one. I think right now I'm able to remove this. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so you, you should see um, when we're, I've been, have, I've had the chance to do GAM in Brazil and I could tell that the spirit of GAM was there because GAM is, yes, it's an intellectual uh, it can be very intellectual, very systematic, but it's also an approach from the heart, okay? It's the head, it's the heart, it's the body, okay? Uh, so I could tell the spirit of GAM was there when medication users, service users in Brazil adopted, I am a person, not an illness. And they made posters with that and all that. Um, it's the starting point of GAM. The next, if you look at the speech balloon or speech bubble, it says space of open dialogue. If you don't have that, you have no GAM. <laughs> uh, this is how GAM got to be developed because we had a committee where we were able to freely discuss medication. Medication takers or workers working in community organizations. This is how we went about developing GAM is by uh, having different you know, safe spaces of open dialogue so that we can evolve. Uh, we, how can we, uh, a key issue is how can we have a safe space of open dialogue between the medication taker and the prescriber? I do a lot of work on that space, okay? How can we have that safe space with family members? Um, and how can we have in a society the safe space of open dialogue. How can we freely discuss the different issues of medication? We need that because it's complex. There are many things that are at work. So we need to keep having those safe spaces of open dialogue. Critical vision, critical thinking, the antennas. I talked about the antennas. The eyes are at the tip, you know, the antennas of the, of the snail. And it really looks everywhere. And, it, and, this, he, and when I say snail, I say he or she, because it's uh, both he or she. So I like to say that a snail is LGBT, LGBTQ+. Plus. So the snail is really, uh, is really in. <laughs> the caracol gam is really in. Um, so, um, so how can we have access? I'm not gonna, we talked about that at the beginning. So how can we have access to different sources of information? When we say critical thinking, it doesn't necessarily mean, it can mean against psychiatry or against psychiatric medication, but it means more having an open mind, asking question, having access to independent sources of information. How can we make those, this information accessible to people? That's a big issue also. Uh, at the bottom, it's written, medication is, it has its limits. Why GAM? Because 
medication will not solve all the problems or, re or take away all the suffering. We need more than that. Medication can have a role to play for some people, but it cannot be the only thing, the only response that we give to suffering. Um, we have to look at the living conditions that people are at, you know? We have to look at the level of support. We have to look at many different things that are involved and the people and, and the lives of the people. Empowerment. So I'm referring to the shell. Again, I like to repeat that it's a spy. It's a, when I look at my own process of empowerment or healing uh, in regards to medication or other issue, it's really, I like the idea of a spiral uh, so that we go back and forth and we go back, we go two steps backwards, three steps forward. So it's the same thing with medication. So very organic, YAM is an organic living process. Uh, empowerment. So we, we look also at the power dynamics. How can we, we how can we make the relationship more equal between medication takers uh, in relationship in relation to the doctors or the people around them? How can we in our own practices? And that I'm saying for everybody. How can we you know narrow the gap of power between people who take medication and those who don't? How can we offer them choices, options? Quality of life. I'm going very quickly. Uh, I'm, giving, I'm giving you a summary of GAM of 165 pages of a GAM book. But we also have a binder of three inches tall of several tools. We have 25, 30 different tools. So I'm just giving you an overview and you'll see what interests you. I think it's important as first to get uh, an idea, an idea of uh, a general idea of the approach. Quality of life, it's at the, you see it's, uh, it's at the heart of the shell. Uh, it's, I would also say it's like the genius of GAM. One of the things, a couple of things stand out with GAM that I haven't seen in other approaches, alternative approaches to medication the symbolic aspects that we did last time. Uh, quality of life, it's common sense, but as I often say in psychiatry, we, forgot, we forget common sense. So medication should be improving the quality of life of the person taking the medication. It should not be making it worse. It's a psychiatrist who said that, a French psychiatrist from France. So, uh, but quality of life, it's the quality of life from the point of view of who? From the point of view of the person taking the medication. So how do we know? How can we uh, equip ourselves to know more about a quality of life? I'll go more into some details about that later, but it's to look at the different spheres. We really go concretely. One of the exercises that people do with the GAM booklet Pages 41, if I recall correctly, 41 to, 41 to 47, is to look at the different aspects of one's life. So how is, um, how's my, I'll give you some examples of the <coughs> quality of life. Uh, how's my, uh, how's my daily life? How, how are my sleeping patterns? My eating, how, what do I eat? Do I have access to what I need? Uh, how, do I, um, how do I take care of myself? So that's on a, you know, on a daily basis. What are my living conditions like? So we look at where you're staying. We look at your budget. Then we look at your social life, your relationships. You know, how do they look like? What are the people around you? Do you feel comfortable? Do you feel, you have, you feel safe with the people? that are around you. And then lastly, we look at your health, your physical health and emotional health. So uh, so this is an exercise that I do uh, when I do groups. We do the quality of life and it's, we start, we say I am a person, not an illness. So we start with the life of the person and afterwards, only afterwards, we look at how medication is impacting 
this dif these different spheres of your life. When people are not sure, you know, about the medication, this really brings answers. It brings a lot of answers to see concretely what medication is doing. And when I say that, it's not necessarily negative. Uh, some people, I can give you some answers, some uh, conclusions that people came to. Some people can see, yes, I'm getting side effects. You know, I see that uh, the sleeping, for example, I'm sleeping, I'm taking, you know, um, to medication to sleep, but actually it's not really helping me to sleep. But some other people, they realize that, oh, now I understand what the medication is doing and the benefits that it's doing. So it really, it's gonna be different and it's gonna evolve with time. But often, you know, we're told that medication is good for you, but we're not told of how good, what it's supposed to do. So that, that's one of the key, uh, that's key. Uh, for quality of life. I'm trying, did I miss, uh, I'm trying to see if I missed any of the big, uh, okay. So now the seven GAM steps. So some of the stuff that we've done that I've covered now and the GAM values and principles are, you know, you will find them in the seven steps. So the seven steps, it's not that uh, you do, you follow step number one, number two, number three. GAM is not a program. GAM is an approach. It's, it's not a protocol. It doesn't tell you how to go about things. It gives you a general direction. And it's the people, it's the person that decides where he or she is at and what they want to do, you know, and where they, and which step speaks to them at the moment. Uh, so awakening, I'll fit in now the principles and some of the stuff we've learned into the steps. Awakening, there are exercises to discuss together or, you know, if you're following a person with a worker uh, or as a peer support, you know, what is it, what does it mean to you? I am a person, not an illness. Awakening, I have rights. When I teach, when I, I'm going to say that and I feel a little bit, I feel like, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, I feel sad when I say that, but when I teach about medication, I say to people, you are allowed to say no to what is proposed to you. And there's always one or two people that raises their hand. Are you saying that I'm allowed to say no to my psychiatrist or my social worker? I says, yes, that's what I'm saying. Unless you are under a court order, a CTO, you are allowed to say no to whatever we propose to you. It just shows you how deep is sometimes the submission, you know? Some people have learned that they're not allowed to say, you know, what they want. Uh, me, uh, so awakening, awakening to the symbolic aspects. So medication, yes, has, you know, has physiological effects, but also symbolically it represents, it has meanings, and we should take these into account. Do something, recognize them and do something with it. Step number two, looking at yourself. So this is the quality of life that I talked about. Um, and if step number three, so you see, we haven't taken any Please. decisions yet. Yes. Sorry, I, I, it's probably me, but you know, you were talking about in the awakening a bit that people have rights that looking at themselves as a person and and sort of more holistically and then you, you were talking about meanings and I got a bit lost there on okay so by meanings by meanings you remember when we did did you do were you there you, you were there when we did the symbolic aspects mm -hmm. okay so when I say meaning the medication has meanings so this is so this is this the whole thing about the symbolic aspects and it can the symbolic aspects may look like it's something theoretical and not useful, but it's actually a tool that I use regularly, regularly. Um, and I'll see afterwards, I'm trying to tell you, give you an overview, and then I will I can tell you with your questions how I use these different things, okay? But you're getting a crash course. I just want, if you're able to hang in there, you're getting a crash course. Uh, looking, okay, so you see, we haven't talked about any decisions yet. We start with the person awakening, looking at yourself, okay? 
Number three, if you want to continue the process of questioning, of learning more about medication and its impact of your life, um, you have to have the right people. It may shake your shake some things, you know, in your in you. So you should have people that are comfortable. Uh, you need to have safe spaces of open dialogue with the people around you and supporters. If you don't have people supporting you with a GAM approach, uh, then you need to find this could be the next step for you to have support, to have some people. Information, I'm going very quickly, but um, in the GAM guide, there's a page uh, where there's one sheet so it's really learning about each medication that you take. So if you're taking Ativan, Olanzapine, you're taking all the medication, one page is one medication. You write about it, what are its uh, therapeutic effects, its side effects, its interactions. So you really, it's, it's, this is the systematic part of really knowing about, about what you take. Also knowing about the withdrawal effects, okay? And so, yeah. And the tools. So that's the tools. The tools, they're different tools. Uh, journaling is one tool. Okay. I'll mention two quickly. I'm trying to mention the things that I use on a regular basis and that people find useful. There's on page 71 of the GAM guide, you have a self-evaluation scale called How Am I Doing? So this is a scale, uh, if you're familiar with RAP, it's similar a bit to RAP. It's a scale of one to five where you write how you're feeling. Number one, you're feeling well. How does it look like when you're feeling well? Some people have never felt well in their life. So they put when they feel at their best, okay? Number two, things start not to go well. Number three, you really know you're into something. So it's a process of describing the state. We do it in a group often, okay? And the actions that you can put along that scale as things, as you, as you are starting to, un, to unravel. Everybody hates to do it, to do that scale. Because you're going into the suffering, you're going into the pain. However, the ways I, I found, however, when people do it, they feel ready, they're happy. They have it. It's something you can use with your family. You can use it with your doctor. You can use with your best friend. You can use it yourself. And one of the ways I do it, we do it in a group together. We share so that it's less painful. And also by hearing the others, you, 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 you can add on some things to your own scale. As a society, we are not encouraged to talk about our states of being when we're not doing well. So, uh, so it can be tricky, but it's a good exercise. Another tool, check-in buddy. Check-in buddy, feels funny to say that in English because in French we have, we have a beautiful word that doesn't exist in English. It, uh, there's a word mad in, in, that exists. In French it's called garde-fou and there's a word mad. So we have a play on words with madness with the word. And garde-fou is, you know, when you're going on a road it's those cement blocks that keep you from falling off. Well, that's what it means in French. And, it's, and there's a word mad. It's, uh, it's really cool. So we, the best word we found in English is check-in buddy. Check-in buddy is a person that you give the permission. You can share your uh, scale. How am I doing scale? You give that permission to that person to tell you when she, she or he feels that you're starting not to do well. The, the purpose of that is not to have a police looking after you, <laughs> a built-in police, but it's to give you power, really. Instead of having five or six people that are on the lookout in case you should be having another breakdown, you tell them, I have this person, she is, she, I've given her the power and the permission to tell me, okay? So that's the tool we, I use a lot. And you see what, this, the check-in buddy, the, the scale, uh, these are tools that were invented by service users that were part of the original GAM committee. So you see only now we're at step number four, deciding what you want to do with in relation to medication, okay? Uh, so there are tools to help you decide. 
Uh, and there's no pressure. When the time is right, you know it, okay? But also, if you want to change some things about your medication, if you wait till you're never afraid, there are no fears, you will never do it, <laughs> okay? Because change and changing psychiatric medication, usually people want to lower. They usually don't need to increase because that's usually done, <laughs> you know? So, uh, but how can you deal with fear? And also by listening, when you're in a peer support group, again, peer support group, uh, there's a process that happens that some of the fears are taken care of. And you're not alone when you're in a peer, uh, or again, peer support group. Um, and it's a, I, I say the word process, people learn about GAM and usually they don't wanna go and change anything in the medication. It takes a couple of years. You know, they have to get used to the idea. It's a, it's a, it's a spiral process. Planning and preparing for change. So that's if you want to reduce. So these are what you should put in place. Things to consider, respect and entrust yourself, have a healthy lifestyle as much as possible. But then I say that some, it's really being in touch with yourself and your needs as you go through a withdrawal process. The step five, six, and seven are about withdrawal, okay? I see some people eat more sweets when they're reducing because they feel better that way, okay? So healthy lifestyle, I would say listening to your needs. If you feel eating less sweets is better, but then the other person feels eating more is better, to each his own. You know best what's good for you. Put together your support team, your GAM supporters. Plan other ways to cope with suffering. You can do that before you even change any of the medication. <clears throat> There's a lot of work also that could be involved with meet and negotiate with your doctor or psychiatrist. I've been around for a while, as my gray hair can attest, and uh, wrinkles, beginning of wrinkles. But anyway, um, some doctors reduce medication without even patients asking. I see that some doctors are already doing GAM and, and trying to for their patients to have the minimal effective dose. So it's, it's not all doctors that are resistant to reducing. That's not my experience. I actually get requests from people. I'm, I was really surprised that in the last couple of years, the doctors wants to reduce the medication and the, pers and the person doesn't want to have their meds reduced. Okay, so, um, okay. Step six is, can be very technical, but if you're reducing, there's the, the famous 10% rule. It doesn't have to be 10%. Uh, we need more information about that. But the key, the key principle when you're reducing is it should be done gradually. If you're reducing 50%, that's too quickly, uh, unless you're having a toxic reaction to a medication. And when you go from step to step, you should not go to the next step while you're still having withdrawal reactions. You have to be in touch with what's going on in your life. If you're reducing and you're having a major stressor, then you could be having effects that you think are withdrawal effects, but it could be actually in relation to your stressor. We in the Quebec, and you must have those, you have you have compound, compounding or compound pharmacies? Compounding pharmacies, does that ring a bell? I've heard someone talk about them. I okay, don't, don't know we use them a lot. We use what, them a lot. What, what are they? It's when you're reducing and especially with um, antidepressants, when you get towards the end or even at the beginning, it's to get the, let's say you're, let's say you're taking a Faxer and they only make 37.5 milligrams while a compounding pharmacy can give it to you in smaller doses. So if your pharmacist, the pill does not exist and the dose that you need, the compounding pharmacy can make it. That can make the difference between being able to reduce and not, and or not. Big, big ally. And I found in Quebec and the, uh, the pharmacist, uh, <laughs> I spoke with him late then, he says, he says, you've been teaching GAM again, eh? I says, why do you say that? Well, because I've been having a lot of requests. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I found a place they do it for free. So I refer them there. We're almost done. So you're still hanging in there? Yeah. One step left. And then, and then we'll see what we do. 
Step seven is that managing withdrawal reactions and emotions. So it's a period of physical and mental rebuilding. Any substances that you are used to having in your body, whether it's smoking, coffee, olanzapine, uh, you have to allow your body to get used to not having the substance in your body. So it's a physical and mental rebuilding. You, in this, you understand, in this, one of the objectives is to understand the effects of reducing and stop, of reducing or withdrawing or stopping. Um, learning about the main withdrawal reactions according to the cl class of medications, especially the one you want to reduce. There is a lot of work that I, I wrote this, that I wrote different parts of this GAM book. This, this is the part, one of the parts that I wrote, managing intense emotions and sensations. So it's not emo just, just emotions, you can feel physical sensations. So how do, these, these are some tips. Dealing with legitimate anger. Anger can be, doesn't mean it will happen to somebody who's reducing. Uh, anger can happen if for an abrupt withdrawal. It can even be like rage. It could be a withdrawal reactions. But if you're going more gradually, sometimes it could be related to repress anger from situations of former um, violence or abuse, okay? Managing the return of energy. Uh, you have, when your brain is cleared, you have this return of energy, what do you do with it? You've been used to sleeping 12, 13 hours for 10 years. Now you only sleep seven or eight hours. You've got all this extra time and energy. What do you do with it? Okay. Sore muscles, that's associated with uh, mostly antipsychotics, but sometimes antidepressants. So be aware. Uh, doctors don't often most often don't know very much. They don't know about withdrawal reactions. Even pharmacists at times, pharmacists know better. So I've seen some people refer to rheumatologists because the, you know, they were having muscle pain and it was, a, it was yes, the pain was real, but it was due to the withdrawal process. Then preventing crisis situations. And then there's a checklist. Do you have everything you need to get started? And, as, and then the GAM guide, whatever we discuss, um, we have um, the stories of people who have undertaken this, this step and what they say about it. So I would say that's a um, good start. A good start. I would say this is a good introduction. I think so. I'm just gonna remove the snail. I, oh, <laughs> I didn't even see him pop up. I didn't see Paul. Okay, I'm just thinking, um, this is a lot of information. I just gave them an overview, uh, Paul. What I did differently is I've added the seven steps. So I, add, I talked about the values and the principles and how they fit in into the seven steps. So I'm trying to see well, how are we- for the last um, 25 minutes, so I kind of got pretty much- Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so yeah, that's I do it uh, when I have when I have more time. I go into the seven steps. Okay, I don't know if it's too much information, but I I, I took the I decided to give you an overview of the whole thing, and I'm checking if you've overdosed on yam now or not. <laughs> Was that a yam overdose or how how are we doing? No, not at all. It's um. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, there was a lot in terms of understanding the, the, the seven steps and I've, I've, I don't know what other people feel. I've really got an understanding of the snail. That's made a lot of sense and, and all of that thing. Just just trying to um, to process. Um, well, you know what I'm thinking? Should we, would it be a good time, a good timing to just take a five minute break and then come back? Let's do that. Uh -huh. And then we can process and, and, and do some uh, some gaga zoom prevention, okay? Yeah. So five, six minutes, and then we come back refreshed and gung ho. Could you leave this could you leave this mail on the screen? Yes, I can, yes, certainly. Please. And and Paul has it, he can send it to you. 
I've, got, um, I've actually got the snail. I've got the snail upstairs in my bedroom. <laughs> the actual snail, I've got that one. <laughs> okay, so I can also, I have, I wrote some notes about, you know, about the, uh, since I, I've written some notes. So, but these are like handwritten notes because this is not an official document. But if you think that it's useful, I can send it to you and we keep it amongst ourselves, you know. It's not an official GAM document. So I'm okay, gonna so the, let's let's have the break then, and we'll come back. Yeah. And, and I'm gonna put this the snail back. Yeah. I'll see you in a minute then. Yeah, let's take yeah. a break. Voila. Okay. Bye, Thank six you. minutes. You're welcome.
Hi, Neil. Did you hear from Rita? No. No. What nothing. happened? I don't know. She didn't answer. Maybe she's just not seen her emails, or. No, maybe not. <clears throat> I think she's had a rough time trying to come off, to be honest, and then to get back on it. Yeah, that must and be quite... I don't know how that's affecting her now. It's a while since I've spoken to her, but... Yeah. Has she had to go on quite a high dose to begin with, or...? I don't think so. Um, yeah. I'm not sure, to be honest, but I think it's the, the, the reality's kicking in that she may have to stay on it for her. Um. Well, that was one of the things that um, Will Hall was saying, wasn't he? That about that actually with the mood stabilizers, they're harder to come off. I don't think she's on mood stabilizer. No, she is. She is on. Yeah, she's mood on lithium. Yeah. She's on lithium. Or well, she? W I don't think she is at the minute, but she she will go back on that at some point. Apparently, that's the plan because oh, that's no. what she was on before. Hi, Celine. I, I think we uh, uh, do it, do we? I'll, I'll wait until Gail returns yeah. and uh, and then we can decide it. Uh, we could remove the um, the caracol again, caracol, so we can see our faces uh, bigger than uh, than half an inch <laughs> or an inch. <laughs> It's, it's the only way we get a sense of community now is through a screen, eh? a flat screen. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Yeah, it's really, really crazy. It's really, uh, yeah, there are no words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hate it and at the same time, that's all that there is in a way. <clears throat> what do you mean? Well, I mean, just being on Zoom is sort of a good yeah. thing. But then at the same time, that is how you meet people. So. And, and I was just talking. I don't know if Paul is back. I can't. I will check if he's back. But um, I don't know if you guys are starting to have this discussion. But we, um, you know, we have to get out of the COVID infection phase for sure. But afterwards, we're going to have to rethink of how we do a lot of stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff that will take place either on Zoom, because if I just look at my groups that I do, that I facilitate, and uh, some people prefer being on Zoom. Some people abhor it, and I have people, I mean, they, they're on Zoom, and they don't want their face to be shown, and they don't want their name to be, to yeah. show. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, and, uh, and our community is so respectful, you know, so uh, and, and we have also the hybrid mode where we, you know, I did that last couple of months where I have people, I'm doing a GAM group, I have people on a screen, I organize the classroom so the, the bodies of people with, you know, in that are present are on each side. And I put the screen at, at the back of the class, so I have a, like a U-shaped kind of circle, you know. So, um, so I think we'll, I'll be doing more, more courses where I have people in presence and people on a uh, and people on a screen. Yeah. We have to adapt. <laughs> That's true. So, Celine, how do you yeah. want to do this? Do you want us to ask you questions, or how? how or do you well, want I think, to ask questions? I think, you know what I would do is maybe if Gail is 
okay with it. I well, I would remove the uh, gam caracol. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. We can see each other's face more. Okay, and <clears throat> and I, you know, Paul can send. I can send. Paul has the caracol. We can send it. You know what? I think here's what I propose. I think. I think I would go with your reactions. I think it's nice to have the reactions. This is this. For, I think first of all, we should um, feel that that this is a historical moment. <laughs> it's the first time that GAM is presented on the continent. Okay, and we're starting with the UK. So it's first time. So I think we have to celebrate whatever we. Yeah. So it's a start. That's good. So this, this shows that this group uh, has an open mind and are very eager, okay? And so I think I would go with your reactions because it's nice to have the reactions because in the reactions, you have the emotions. As I said, GAM is something of the head, the heart, and the body. So we'll start with the reactions, like the heart. And then afterwards, we can go with your questions. Uh, I don't know. I think it's going to be tight for me to talk about GAM practices. But if you have, because I think the other part, you have to know GAM, then how is this put into practice? Mm -hmm. There's also that. Okay, so reactions first. Um, I, I felt um, there's a lot of, it felt quite freeing. So it felt like there's a lot of freedom. So when I think of people who've in, been in hospital for years, um, that, it's quite um, it's quite emotional, really, isn't it? To think that they could, they could, or could have had, or could have um, a very different life. Um, so yeah, it almost seems quite unbelievable because we've got so used to things being this way. So. Good point. Good point. Good point. I'll react to what you. Rea I'll react to your reactions afterwards because I want to stay. Because if I start adding on, then I'm going to be changing your reactions, okay? So I'm going to stay at the reaction level. <laughs> and so, yeah. I, I, could, I think Anandi or Paul wanted to talk. I'm not sure. Paul or Anandi? I was going to say the thing that struck me first when I saw the slide with the snail was the huge space that Wrights had in it and um, how, in a sense, that rights are the basis. Yeah. And, um, you know, looking at this, it's, it, it, it's also quite painful when, you, when I think about, you know, my daughter and what she's been through. And um, really, in a sense, how the last three years haven't worked um, because at the base of it, even if we consented to it at the beginning, she was not, her rights were not being taken into consideration. And I think that the, the bringing that into the absolute sort of heart and rock of what you do is, um, is just really powerful. Thank you, Anandi. Yeah, and, and, and it's really close to me right now because I'm working with somebody who's subject to sort of polypharmacy, is not able to exercise a choice. And the whole issue for them is that they essentially disagree with having medication put in their body. That's not what they want. It's not their choice. And they want to exercise the right not to do that. But because they're subject to the CTO, they are not in concordance. They've been called in. And the whole experience has is, is, is basically broke his health. Mm -hmm. um, so in effect, they've actually brought about, and he actually believes it's like a conspiracy. I mean, in fact, it is in a way, because he was well when he went in, and now he's not. So um, I just feel it. And so for me, I, I, the activist part of me says, let's get some funding and let's begin with a practice group or something where we could sort of do it experientially and go through the exercises and the steps and not the steps because they're not, I know, they, 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 they adopt the approach and do it, you know, and, 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 and uh, 
maybe it's a training the trainers thing or maybe i don't know what it is but it's 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 people maybe who like members of this group have gone through, are going through medication journeys but are kind of reaching into this approach so they can become trainers themselves i don't know that so that's where i'm feeling it i feel that what i'm seeing is especially after what we heard from will hall which really corresponded what with what you were saying celine how nuanced and complicated and how relational it is but he said something i thought was really important and he said well effectively you know meds like all other drugs they're effectively either stimulants or the sedatives or somewhere there in between and the but the effect they have on you is like the placebo and who knows how i might react to coffee or to marijuana or to alcohol or to antipsychotics that's something which is different you know so for somebody like the guy I'm working with right now, he, who experiences that as an absolute negative for his health and doesn't see anything changing in relationship to experience, I want this to be available, you know, that we can say we've got something that somebody who wants to exercise that journey or to begin that journey has somewhere safe to begin to explore it. Because mm -hmm. that's what we don't have. And I think that when people are at the at the meeting with Will, that's what we're there, people are looking for. Where is this safe space where we can do this? And I think maybe GAM might be a very important part of the answer. Yeah. I, think what, I think what I'm generally feeling about my, um, my recovery process at the minute is sort of reflected recently that every time I sort of step into myself, and be sort of me in my experience, which I don't do very often, to be honest. I don't do at all, really. Um, that's when I go psychotic. That's when I break from reality. Because I have like a little bit of a spell. I did last time. I had a little bit of a spell where things were more real, like in, in the sense of being grounded. And then I flip out. Um, and medications used as a way of saying, oh, you're not ready to do that effectively. You need to sort of, go out of your experience and be in your head and that sort and it just feels quite a distance away from actually being able to be in my experience i think medication holds me back so it makes me think do i want to reduce my dose to, to make it a bit easier that's that's what i've been thinking but in terms of having the things in place to um to do that i'm not sure i do um there's a lot of things I need to achieve before I can sort of take that risk in a way. But I know that's a lot, but yeah, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. I was, what you've been telling, been saying, uh, welcome Paula, hi. <laughs> hi. Um, I think some of the GAM steps are right, at, right really good for you, uh, Neil, but so, there's no, I think you're in the process of gathering information and, uh, and there are things in there that can help you out, you know, with where you're at and the peer support, you know, the GAM, this is the GAM booklet and the tools that we have. It's like a framework, okay? But what fills the framework, this is like the bones, the flesh is the people <laughs> and the experience and the peer support is really a big chunk, really, really big chunk. It's, it's, the issues are, can be complex. Sometimes they're not, we make them complicated. And then somebody in the group will just say, well, what about, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need a community. <laughs> we need a community around this. You don't need mm -hmm. a lot of people, but you need different people. So it's not surprising, Neil, you feel that you need different things and there's some missing pieces. There are a lot of missing pieces. And one of the reasons we have GAM is that is as a people, we take our own power and go out there and get those missing pieces for the people, for ourselves. I think mm -hmm. that's, and it's an evolving process. GAM does not have all the answers. No, it does not. The people do. But this, it gives what GAM, one of the advantages of GAM, it brings back common sense, <laughs> you know, common sense like how's your life let's talk about how your life is today how does it feel to be you how's your life how's your house how's your how are your relationships going 
and common sense, like safe space of open dialogue. We need safe spaces, very mm -hmm. basic. So, but this is common sense, but it's hard to have a safe space around the issue of medication. You know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I say, it's as if now, I, this is, I don't know if it will make sense because I'm translating from French, but it's like now we have portable asylums. They are in the form of a pill, okay? So now we can have portable asylums. And, and it's, I think one of the reasons people are afraid when they talk about medication is that it's, we're touching, we're getting close to madness. Before people were put away in asylums, but, but now we have medication and uh, so I don't know if that makes sense, this, um, this uh, idea. I, I, I go to visit Trieste Mental Health Department and they've got a really kind of radical beginning. They, they called it psychiatric democratic and they've got all these, these kind of graffiti art all around the, the psychiatric hospital, which has now been turned into a cultural park. One of them is a, is a man in the head. He's got a cage around his head. It's like a, like a bars around his head it's inside. And that was just to illustrate that you can have an asylum by just putting it around the person's head, in effect. It was, yeah. it was quite an interesting idea. And their idea is mm. freedom first. It was that you don't use coercive psychiatry, that it's all about partnership. And even though medication may play a role, it's a it's it's a very discursive process, you know, it's learning from both sides what he does, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um I, I mean what I'm thinking is is um how do we take this learning? I mean, it's rapid. I mean, we've just had, you know, essentially three or three hours less than to learn about an approach, and particularly the seven process and those seven seven elements, which are made up in the book. So I wondered if it would be appropriate for us to sort of say that we would become a group, maybe a little bit bit larger, and that we meet on a regular basis to go through the handbook yeah. and learn in that way. Yeah, and maybe people would take different responsibilities. So somebody would do a chapter on this, and then we, you know, so people are kind of co-leading it. We take responsibility together. I know someone who wants to is quite keen to attend something. He lives up in Lancaster, um, so he'd yeah, like to come I along. Some maybe people like, contacted me about that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm thinking of also people like Kenny. I don't know where Rita is, but Rita would might might want to step into this group. Um, you know, so I can think that we can find a number of people who would be really interested in getting part of this, who we've already got contacts with. Um, Celine, I just was wondering whether, just thinking about the GAM steps and just having an, to get a greater understanding of how it's worked for different groups, um, how... Um, what sort of, I mean, I guess every group is different, um, but what is the usual um, process in terms of um, a group coming together and then do they go through that handbook in a sense? Um, and as, as um, users of psychiatric medic medicine, and do they sort of go through that handbook um, and do all the and, and their little exercises in order to that's that's how it works yes and no that's that's why I, I'll, what i can tell you i can tell you the different ways that we go about it it can they it can take different there are different ways of going about it okay i'll give you the two main ones okay so if we look at brazil and some of the groups in quebec they will take this booklet, the handbook, and do the seven what, steps together. What you have, you can take it off. So one, one group, they do the seven steps, okay? And in 20 sessions, they meet first 10 sessions and then 10 afterwards. Because it's not a process that you can rush, okay? So, so that's a format. Some people, what they do, they just do a portion of the GAM group, just the quality of life section, okay? They could do, I am a person with an illness, and then they just do, they just look at the quality of life. That can be done over five or six sessions, okay? The way, another way that GAM is done, 
the way I do it. But then, um, and I'm not saying one way is better. I think it's different when you're new to GAM and then when you've been around GAM, like me. I've been around GAM for a while. Uh, what I do is that I have a GAM support group. It's an open group, okay? It can be tricky sometimes, but more, but you maneuver. Um, so, so it's not a closed group and we meet every week every Wednesday afternoon. It, this has been ongoing for a couple of years. And uh, what I do with the group, I ask them what they want. So the format that I use, um, the format has been working for three years. Uh, we split the workshop into two parts, okay? It's actually easy to do in a way. The first part is peer support, it's sharing. Where are you at? What do you want? What would you like to share about your medication? And different kinds of people attend this group. The, uh, the, um, the challenge you have to maneuver well with this group is that a lot of the people who came to attend this group are in the process, a long process of reducing several psychiatric medication. So you don't want it to make it appear that it's a withdrawal group, okay? And, it, and also give the impression that if you're taking meds and you're not reducing, you're not doing, you're, you're off. You're not doing the right thing. So but that, you can maneuver that, okay? And so, uh, so the first half is peer support, okay? And they share, and they, they share among themselves, you know? We, I, <laughs> I need that to do GAM. <laughs> I learned from them, you know? Because I stopped taking meds some time ago. Uh, the second part is the critical information. What a topic that they want to know about. And it changes each week, each semester. So I asked them at the beginning to see what they want to learn about, okay? And I program it each week. But what I do at the beginning and I tell them, I teach them GAM at the beginning. The first three um, uh, group meetings that I do, like the second part, I wanna make sure they know GAM. Because or else if they're just coming in, they're not going to know what GAM is, you know. And then afterwards, I come up with the topics. So regular topics, they want to know about, I'm telling you about the topics that come up every semester. They want to know about side effects. They want to know about withdrawal effects. They want to know about alternatives, you know. If I want to, uh, what are alternatives that I could use, whether you know, I'm reducing or not, uh, they, another, oh, my rights. We always spend one session, uh, one meeting on the rights. We have in the Quebec, the way we have community groups, community-based groups um, in each region of Quebec that deal specifically with the rights in relation to mental health. So I invite the group. They come over and then talk. I can talk about rights, but I mean, I don't fight for rights on a daily basis. So rights is a topic, negotiation with the doctor. How can I negotiate, get heard, supported by what, with what I want with a doctor? Uh, yeah, so th that's, that's another format. Um, yeah, yeah. So in, when this, in the formation of this group, so you've got a group of people who've come together and then, you know, they're discussing in a sense, the first thing is really looking at the snail and them getting a sense that they actually have rights and that they can empower themselves and they can ask questions and they can think critically and think about what's best for them and their quality of life. Yeah. And with this whole issue, you know, about the safe space for open dialogue, and you mentioned both, in and, but you're not talking about open dialogue as a therapy thing. You're just talking yeah. about it in, in terms of, discussing with medical practitioners and the family and things like that. So um, what I wondered was in your experience, um, is the first thing that people have to actually address is their discussions with their own family? It depends. It depends. It depends. Uh, some people want to have their family on board others not. I think it makes the big difference here is if you're living with your family member or not. 
Okay. So, so, but again, I'm just thinking, I think I have to mention cultural factors here. My culture is not the same as your culture in the UK, you know, so I'm not sure because when I go to Brazil, the family, remember, uh, Paul, the family, the family part is more important with Yam. They're on board right from the start. So it's, it's, it, it's, um, it depends on the people that I have. And also the people that I have are usually not living with their families anymore, like over, they're over 40. So it depends with the group that you have. This, the issue of family members comes up, comes up more when I do individual, because I do individual follow-up. So it, the family will, will, will be anecdotal. It comes up, but not to the point where we, um, where a whole session is spent on that. So far. But the group has been running. Do up family the members sometimes come to these sessions, or does it tend to be, no, this is a space for, okay. if you like, the, the users of psychiatric medication? Well, that, the way we do things in Quebec, again, culture, there's a culture also of the alternative movement, okay? The parents' movement in, in my culture, um, I'm not very proud of that, but we were, were, uh, we're not working together. We're not working in the same direction. We, we, I think one of the issues, we work separately. I would like it that we work together more, but the Francophone Quebec movement is not there yet. We work separately. So, uh, so if a parent can come to the GAM group, but if they're taking medication themselves. <laughs> They have to be medication takers. And I haven't had the situation so far of a parent coming with their child, you know, their own child. So if this comes up, then I would discuss it with the group. Whoever's there first, you know, who's part of my group, we would discuss it because it has to be a safe space. Yeah, I think it's quite interesting because one of the things we're trying to do with the Families of Recovery Group and the whole CHARM initiative is trying to create these alliances and partnerships across groups that sometimes have different positions because, you know, and what we're finding is, is that particularly the family members, they're, they're as pissed off, deprived of hope and actually feel they've been sold something which actually hasn't been delivered, you know, in the way that they thought that medication was going to help or not help. Um, so now 20 down, years down the road or 15 years down the road, they're still facing this chaotic relationship with a fragmented and I think what was the word fragmented and uh, stagnating services which don't really find a way to actually relate to people in a way which would make a difference so you know we, we we're there I think so what's, what I'm thinking is is that um you could start yeah go ahead yeah sorry I'm thinking about you know catching that energy and trying to find a way to not be seen as exclusive, but we are prepared, you know, that like we have a hearing voices group and it's for people to hear voices, you know, that, that's something we do. Um, and so we can create spaces which are, you know, created around that kind of space. So, cool. um, yeah. I mean, well, I'm, 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 I guess I'm, I'm, one of the things, I mean, obviously as a family person, I'd love to sort of do this thing and wh whatever, but I'm also quite conscious, particularly with the, um, you know, thinking about your, 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 your snail and the safe spaces and that um, when you've got a person with lived experience who's still suffering and who uh, perhaps we could run a GAM group how for would a family members. member or how do family members not take up too much space actually that's the issue isn't it otherwise you can't maintain the principle of what, what about a separate group for family members around GAM principles and understanding medications which is actually because sometimes you know that your relationship with your family member if they're not on, on your side that can be quite problematic so doing something specifically around GAM principles and explaining this to family members sets up a much more likelihood for a kind of collaborative process as more people become aware of what the issues are. And actually, I know people recognize these things for themselves. They know about the sedation. They're aware of the difference in the person that they can see. So people aren't naive, they know it, but it's just what to do with it. 
that's a problem. So family members, I think, would welcome a parallel a, a kind of group or something where we develop knowledge and understanding of medication around the GAM yeah. approach. Yeah. And what do you I think? I would say at mean? certain points coming together, because it's good to have... Yeah, at certain points coming yeah, together. Yeah, but at least then people also have their own space, you know, that... Yeah, because we're effectively saying we've created a peer to peer group for family members in, in the same way in relationship to mental health services and in relationship to our own experiences and our own journeys. So that's about and medication is as important to family members as it is to the people who take it quite often. You know, I mean, sometimes it's the person who's the family member who's got to monitor, insist, cajole, uh, what's the word, grass people up, you know, all that thing is part of the journey and needs to be given expression and people need to understand how we can maybe do this differently in the future. Um, yeah, family members can be asked to ring during a, a ward round or something. They'll be on the phone um, being asked to encourage <laughs> the patient to take the medication. Um, so it's really difficult. It is. But I like the idea, obviously, that it's not, it's not, there's options, isn't it? It's a, there's choices. It's not that GAM is about finishing your meds. It's about working out your options, isn't it? And your rights and so forth. But at the moment, I think the system is, you've got to stay on your meds, you've got to stay on your meds. Yeah. You've got to stay on your meds, so, yeah. But GAM, GAM is not about uh, how, adherence. How do you call it when you have the... Adherence, yeah. Adherence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. GAM is not about adherence, but it's also not about withdrawal. It can be. So because some people take it the other way, they think that if you do GAM, you should be bringing people to reduce. You, people can go in either directions. You know, I've seen people, I was called to a group, and it was a community-based group, and they, I could see that I was teaching the course that 15 people, I could tell they were really angry, and I said, what's going on? And I was brought on to, to bring GAM so that to force people to take their meds, okay? <laughs> so, so yeah, I just want to go back. I think, you know what? If you want to involve families from the start, I think I would really love that. Go follow that. Us, we're, I'm not saying they're not family members or are up there that are there yet. No, there are some family members that are at that level, but the... I'll give you one example, like the family groups uh, and the rights groups, we're, we're, we're fighting, we are fighting, we're going against each other. For example, the family groups wants to change the law to make, make it easier to commit people. Well, we're fighting them to stop that, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's that's why it's not working. <laughs> it's not working at all. It's interesting as well because you know we we work with organisations like Rethink, and they might have more of that energy about being you know concerned about the numbers of beds and stuff like that, and seeing that as the issue. But we've got our own lines of into those groups, so we're also members of those groups, and are influencing those chapters and those those groups to be more you know around these rights based issues and human rights. And we and we they are listening, and they are you know particularly the people coordinate those groups. Mary, she's really up for it um, because they, she could, they also can see that this regime is not really doing anything other than giving people an existence in, in many respects. You know, it's really depressing. So something which is more hopeful and positive is, is you know, it's, it's very encouraging to know there is something else out there. Just as Gail said, it's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, so I mean, yeah, and I think probably where family members, as long as they're on board with the GAM model, um, would be really um, useful to have people as part of it is where um, some people have been so heavily medicated that it's actually hard for them to make a start on this process by themselves because they've been so, in a sense, disenfranchised. Yeah into their medication asylum that how do you think anything through you can't and so it's just maybe mm -hmm. I think I dealt with this. Way. sorry i dealt with this at my um hearing voices group um the whole family sort of supporter issue and they actually opted to allow people in so i think it's got to come from the group yeah um, 
and it has to be an ongoing sort of discussion as well. Um, but I, I think you, you know, you can get different responses from different groups, really. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking of building this around the organic recovery learning community and we're trying to create this sense of community. And to me, this is one of the things we're trying to do is create that sense of partnership between family members and service users and create that kind of alternative. It is part, I mean, that family members are, need to be part of the community overall. Um, you know, and that's what we're trying to encourage. So we're creating all these spaces where we can mix and mingle and discuss issues. So when we hold a, when we hold our regular first meetings about medication, there were all sorts of people there, service users, activists, family members, all coming to hear. And the response was really positive. So we know we can build on that. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's a group in Ontario when I Ontario is an English province, um, close to Quebec, and um, you know, the province includes uh, Toronto and Ottawa. And just to show you that there are differences, is that when I was called to bring GAM into Ontario was a family group that called me. So it's not monolithic, there are differences. They're doing great. Actually, they wrote a chapter about the work that they do for, but you're already, you're all, you're, all, you're in the game, so. No, no, but um, I don't see it because it validates what we're doing. So any stories that we hear from other groups, would be really, if you can get that to me, Celine, I'll share it because we do want to know other people's experiences and learn from them, so. Yeah. Yeah, and they, she, they wrote a chapter in the book of um, uh, alternatives. You must have that book. I gave it as a, a gift. But you know, it's the book that Pete, um, Peter Lehman uh, wrote, Alternatives to Psychiatry. Oh, I think I know the one you mean, yeah. yeah it's like a beige cover. Well, so the, organ the a chapter is written in that book from that organization. If you, you know what, if you... <laughs> I was going to say, get the families on board. You've got the basis for it. You I, know? I, I think the way I'm thinking about it is yeah. that I would actually have some kind of public meeting where we would introduce GAM as, a, as an approach within the context of what we're trying to do about medication, that we'd make sure we have family members there and we would talk about a kind of a co-facilitated process where we would set the group up, but also something for family members about that because it needs to be parallel. Um, and I think maybe this is something I, I just just by coincidence, somebody wrote to me is the supporter of our group saying, try this charity, you don't need to put an application and just speak to the secretary. So maybe, uh, you know, we could we could look for some resources and funding to enable us to make this happen. And perhaps, Celine, thank you very much for your kindness in doing this absolutely for free. If you'd be willing to be a consultant of some kind yeah, yeah. and we pay you to to help us through that process, if that would be OK. Yes, so I yes. I'm, I'm, I kind of what do people think about that? I mean, I think we probably would need some support, continuing support from you to help us embed this understanding. Yeah. And, and actually, we might sense. come up with something where we would have some training sessions before the public meeting, make yes. sure you know it, and have a process and work something out over a sort of six month period. Do yeah. You, you know, that kind of thing. Would people be up for that? Yeah, yeah. it would be great. Yeah, to have the training, especially because you mentioned that. The, th the building blocks which you started but it feels like there's a lot more um but you also mentioned the practice you know what it looks like to to do that so it would be it'd be really good to have the training before going out to I, I think so yeah so maybe that would be the next step Celine. that maybe there's a more intensive training which is more length you know we have whatever you thought would be necessary for people to feel they've gone through the exercises and had a chance to try things out you know, that might be a, a, a day, a month. Or, or, or I don't know what people's time availability is, but we try to work out a, a longer session, which we could go into depth and make sure that we could cover and cover the issues that would give us the confidence to know that we've got a st good starting starting spec place. You said it. I think it's, it's, it's by doing, actually by living gap. <laughs> That's by living it.